Let's start having some fun and actually print with HP's PhotoSmart Pro B8850. Now we took a few photographs, but before we printed them out, we want to run them through Photoshop to make them look more artistic. And let me show you the results. We've already done and processed all of the photographs. And the first one is a photo Robin took while she was on holiday in England of one of the British guards. Now we took this photograph, ran it through Photoshop, and we put through what's called the pencil crayon filter, which makes it look like it was colored with a pencil crayon. Then we printed it out, and we printed it on the watercolor paper. And the results are really surprising. It almost looks chalky. And like you, it was actually printed with a real pencil crayon. As I look at it, I feel like as if I smudge my finger over, I could actually smear the ink. Of course, I can't. It's very stable, but it has that nice, flat, chalky look. So this is a really good representation of how a pencil crayon would look if you were to do a c painting of this size or a coloring of this size. This is done, by the way, on a full 13 by 19 inch paper. And we went almost full bleed. We didn't go right to the edge, but we went close. So this, suitable for framing, as far as I'm concerned. Now the next photo, also taken by Robin while she was on vacation, this time in Paris, a nice photo of the Eiffel Tower. And what we decided to do there was we put it through and we made a grayscale filter on it. Then we printed it out again on the watercolor paper and it is beautiful. Those, the matte black and the gray ink really give it nice gradient tones and this looks like it's a classic photograph taken with an old Hasselblad camera or something like that. Now if we wanted to, we could have run this through a film filter, which would have given it a grainy look, making it look older. Or if we wanted to look really old, we could have run it through a sepia filter, which would have made it look patinaed and aged. But we've taken a simple photograph and turned it into something more than a simple photograph, into a piece of art. Now we have one other sample I wanted to show you. The next one here is of a waterfall. And what we did with this one here is we ran it through a pastel filter. We wanted it to look more like a painting. And you can't really see as much difference on the screen itself, but instead of printing it on the watercolor paper, we printed it on canvas. So it's a little bit floppier, it's not quite as rigid, but it's like a beautiful painting now. Now I saw some similar work to this being done in Seattle a couple of weeks ago when I was down there visiting in the Pikes Market. And what was happening there was the artists were taking lithographs of their paintings and they were painting over top. So they were taking a product like this and you could easily use this and they were using their oil-based paints over top again. And what they were creating was even additional depth and texture and a few extra accents of color to make this look that much more creative. And so you really the sky's the limit as far as adding your own imagination to this sort of a craft. Now, how do we go about actually printing this? Let's walk through the process because it's not a simple printing process like printing to a normal printer. Now this can work as a regular printer. It's got a paper tray here in the bottom that we can load 11 by 17 or 8 and a half by 11 paper into and we can just run it as a regular printer. But when you're ready to do a project like this, it's going to be a very hands-on process. So first of all, you're going to make sure that your image is exactly what you want. You're going to print off several test prints on just 8 and a half by 11 paper, making sure everything is perfect and then you're going to get out your good paper. Now here is HP's watercolor paper and we see how it's packaged. This one here is actually certified for 200 years using the inks that we're going to use. So it's what we call archival quality. It's going to last for a very long time. So then we open up the package and even here, the packaging itself, it's got a bag that seals so that it protects it from humidity. We want the paper to be protected before we print so it'll print out perfectly. You get the paper ready, and we actually have to manually load the paper into the printer. It's got a straight through paper path, because we don't want this paper curving through, uh, coming out of a paper tray. So we actually feed it in, and it feeds out straight at the back. And then we have a little index here on the top of the printer, or on the, on the, on the tray here, that allows us to line everything up. Once we have it lined up, we hold it in place, and then we hit the button over here, which actually loads the paper into the paper path. So we, now the, the printer takes over, positions the page ready and now we're ready to print. The next stage is we go to our software, we go to the print menu, and now we have one more chance to check that all of our settings are perfect. We have the correct printer chosen, we have the correct paper size chosen, you want to check and make sure everything is accurate, the quality, very high resolution, and finally you have to make sure that you have the correct paper chosen. And this is an important step because the printer will actually meter the ink delivery to the paper specifically to the type of paper that's loaded in the tray. So here we've got our watercolor paper chosen and now we're ready to print. We have one last check that everything's in order and we click on print. You know, these are considered gallery ready prints and they're suitable for public display, don't you think? 
Just imagine all of the projects that you can do with this printer. You've got gifts, signage, home decorating, scrapbooking. You can do all sorts of crafts with this printer. Of course, it is the perfect companion for the person with a digital SLR camera, for the serious photo hobbyist. Having a printer like this is going to make you look at all of your photo opportunities a little bit differently. It's going to find home in small businesses, in graphic studios, and on crafters and scrapbookers' desks. It's really fired up my imagination. In fact, I think a few framed limited edition oils and watercolors with the Dottotech brand are in my gift-giving future.